sterilization so what is sterilization sterilization is the killing of it is the killing or removal of all microorganisms including the bacterial spores that are normally highly resistant so the process of sterilization will kill majority of the microorganism including even the bacterial spores bacterial spores which are normally highly resistant to temperature changes will be even killed by the sterilization and then we have sterilization most common method which is carried out by autoclaving so what is autoclaving the autoclaving device involve consist of exposure to steam that is moist heat exposure at 121 degrees celsius and there is a pressure of 15 pound per square inch for 15 minutes so this is the most common sterilization technique that uses autoclaving in the autoclave device we have a temperature by exposure to the moist heat about 121 degree celsius and 15 psi pressure for about 15 minutes so that's the common method of sterilization then surgical instruments that are normally damaged by the moist heat are sterilized by exposure to ethylene oxide so surgical instruments cannot be sterilized by autoclaving there is another mechanism by ethylene oxide which is a gas and most iv solutions are sterilized by filtration that uses pores or semi permeable membrane so these are the common ways of sterilization now what does the term disinfection means so the term disinfection is the killing of many but not all the microorganisms so that means that some bacterial spores may survive with disinfection and this is the difference from what we studied in sterilization in sterilization bacterial spores will be killed but in disinfection many of the microorganisms are killed but remember spores still survive as we said for adequate disinfection pathogen must be killed but some organism and bacterial spores may still survive so that's the difference between disinfection and sterilization in disinfection bacterial spores will still survive but in sterilization spores are killed and then examples of various disinfectant include uh, corrosive phenol compounds for example and uh, they are used on inanimate objects that is various non living surfaces you can use the phenol compounds and iodine and ethanol are other example of disinfectants that are used on the skin surfaces so these are some examples of the disinfectants which are commonly used so the rate of killing of microorganisms uh, the death of microorganisms occurs at a certain rate and this depends on mainly two variables which include the concentration of the chemical and the time of exposure to that particular chemical so the rate of killing of microorganism depend upon the concentration of the killing agent which is the chemical and the length of time the agent is applied so these are the two variable in other words we say that the number of survivor are inversely proportional to the concentration of killing agent and length of time the chemical agent is applied to kill that organism so the rate of killing can be defined by the following relationship that is number of survival bacteria will be inversely proportional to the concentration and time to kill that particular bacteria by those chemical agents so concentration and length of time of exposure you can again see the equation and this equation shows that the number of survivors the number of survivors are inversely proportional to the concentration of the chemical agent that is applied and to the time of exposure of that chemical agent we can also say that the number of organism killed are directly proportional to the concentration of the chemical agent and the length of time of exposure so we then why do we use the number of survivor which is says inverse relationship we use the number of survivors bacteria because they are easily measured otherwise that's a much easier relationship when you say that the number of killing bacteria are directly proportional to the concentration of the chemical agent which is used and how much if you use a greater quantity of the chemical agent more bacteria will be killed and if if you increase the time of exposure to the particular chemical agent more bacteria will be killed but still we use that number of surviving bacteria which are inversely proportional as compared to the number of killing bacteria which are directly proportional to the concentration and time of exposure to that particular agent so now we can discuss the chemical agents 
uh, which kill the bacteria by one of the three mechanism so chemical agents which are used to kill the bacteria can kill by one of the three ways this include disruption of lipid in the cell membrane so this is one of the way that they can destroy the lipids in the cell membrane of the microorganism or they can do the modification of proteins or they can do modification of dna so these are the three ways by which chemical agents can destroy or disrupt the lipid in the cell membrane or modification of protein or disrupting the dna these are the three ways by which chemical agents will destroy the microorganisms and now we can discuss that the disruption of lipid in the cell membranes can occur by various chemical agents and these include alcohol for example ethanol or detergents can do disruption of lipid in the cell membrane this is their mechanism and then phenols a uh, common example is chlorhexidine so regarding alcohol or ethanol 70% ethanol is used for skin antisepsis before vein puncture and detergents are commonly used for skin or floor and other skin surfaces disinfection that is killing microorganisms and then phenol or chlorhexidine is commonly used as a surgical scrub uh, so surgeon use it uh, before uh, preparing for their operation then we have hydrogen peroxide so hydrogen peroxide is also a chemical agent and it is used as an antiseptic to clean the wounds and to disinfect the contact lenses so these are the common uses of hydrogen peroxide to clean the wounds and disinfect contact lenses then another chemical agents are formaldehyde and glutaraldehyde now remember glutaraldehyde which has two reactive aldehyde groups as compared to formaldehyde and it is 10 times more effective as compared to the formaldehyde so remember glutaraldehyde is 10 times more effective than formaldehyde and it is less toxic in hospital it is used to sterilize the respiratory therapy equipments so these are the uses of glutaraldehyde that it is used to sterilize respiratory therapy equipments endoscopes and hemodialysis equipments then we have ethylene oxide ethylene oxide is a gas and it is used extensively in hospitals for the sterilization of heat sensitive materials especially okay so ethylene oxide is used for heat sensitive materials and these include sur some surgical instruments and plastics like syringes so surgical instruments and plastics which are heat sensitive will be sterilized by ethylene oxide and then we have heavy metals some heavy metals are of a very important use like silver nitrate they can be used to fight the neonatal conjunctivitis also known as ophthalmic neonatorum this is the gonococcal conjunctivitis that uh, child acquire after birth and uh, then silver silver sulfa diazine it is another heavy metal and it's commonly used in burn patients as a disinfectant so these are important chemical agents now we discussed the chemical agents now it's time for physical agents physical agents can also kill or remove the bacteria and uh, there are three ways of physical agents that can be used to kill the microorganisms and these physical agents include heat radiation and filtration so heat radiation and filtration these are the three physical agents that can be used to kill the microorganisms by various ways that we will discuss now the first physical agent which is heat so heat can be applied in three forms and these three forms of the heat include moist heat and the moist heat then there are two forms one is the boiling and another is autoclaving and then we have dry heat and finally we have pasteurization so these are the three ways by which heat can be applied moist heat dry heat and pasteurization for moist heat we use a autoclaving device for dry heat you can see we use this dry heat sterilizer so first we will discuss the moist heat and uh, in moist heat we discuss that there is boiling and autoclaving in boiling is simply uh, uh, a temperature of 100 degree celsius is used but remember spores will bacterial spores still survive in boiling that's why we have the technique known as autoclaving in autoclave device we will use the moist heat and this will kill even the spores will be killed in this case which normally survive by boiling and uh, this autoclaving include 121 degree celsius temperature exposure for 15 minutes and 15 psi pressure and uh, then we have uh, another topic that is uh, dry heat uh, so dry heat sterilization require a higher temperature 
and this include a range of about 180 degrees celsius for about two hours so it requires much higher temperature that is 180 degrees celsius and for much higher time as compared to moist heat where we discuss for 15 minutes 121 degrees celsius which are lesser temperature lesser time required and uh, the dry heat process so you can see that the moist heat require usually a lesser temperature and so they easily because that uses water and hydrogen bonds are break easily now the dry heat is a process which is primarily used for glasswares and used less frequently than autoclaving so autoclaving which uses moist heat is a much common method of sterilization then we have uh, pasteurization which is a uh, another technique of the heat and pasteurization is commonly used for the milk and pasteurization is the process by which we use a high heat of a temperature of such a range like 60 degrees celsius for 15 minutes you can see and uh, finally we have uh, and these kills majority of the milk burn pathogens then finally we have the flash pasteurization flash pasteurization is used requiring a little higher temperature that is 72 degrees celsius for 15 seconds is often used and pasteurization kill milk born pathogens like mycobacterium bovis salmonella streptococcus but remember with pasteurization the spores still survive the only way you can kill spore is through sterilization by means of autoclaving that we discussed so another physical agent is radiations so how do radiations work uh, radiations uh, the common example of which include ultraviolet light and x-ray radiations so ultraviolet light and x-ray radiations they can be often used to sterilize the heat sensitive materials so heat sensitive items which include sutures surgical gloves uh, plastic materials like syringes they can all be sterilized by means of radiations which include ultraviolet light and x-ray radiations now how does these radiations work ultraviolet light and x-ray radiations work by killing or damaging the dna of microorganism so this is the mechanism by which they kill the microorganism ultraviolet light and x-ray radiation kill by damaging dna and uh, then we finally we have filtration so filtration can be used to sterilize the liquids if the pore size of the filter is small enough so filtration is another technique used for liquids materials and uh, all bacteria and spores they can be retained by means of filtration technique heat sensitive liquids for example iv solutions are often sterilized by means of filtration so iv fluids and liquid materials filtration is a common method in such cases so these are all the techniques of sterilization that we discussed.